Now that you're feeling more confident with gouache and the basic techniques, let's have some fun and experiment with some other techniques, starting with some dry brushing. I like to start by just soaking my brush through and taking off a bit of the excess moisture and then picking up some of the paint and you can start to apply it onto the paper and see what kind of texture you get. Then it's all about just experimenting with the amount of water that you want to add into it. Too much water and you'll lose that dry brush texture. A good way to take out some moisture in the brush if you realize you have too much is to use a paper towel and soak it up around the belly of the brush. Once you get the hang of that, then it's time to practice painting against an opaque layer. The challenge here is to not reactivate that layer beneath, so you really have to control the amount of water in your brush. You want to avoid applying multiple strokes in the same place as you're more likely to reactivate the paint. The next technique you can try is the opposite of dry brushing which is glazing and this time you want to thin down your paint with a lot of water. I especially like to use this technique when I'm trying to paint rays of light as it can look very convincing when done correctly. You might have a harder time trying to not reactivate the layer beneath as your brush is going to have a lot of water in it but it just takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of this. One of my favorite things about gouache is how I can easily make the colors bleed together. Here I've applied some paint onto the paper and while it's still wet I'm going to pick up a lot of white paint with a decent amount of water in my brush as well and as I sweep across the edge of the paint I just laid down the water is going to make the colors bleed together. I love to use this technique whenever I want to create a misty effect. You can also do this with paint that's dried on the paper as well. You just have to go in with a wet brush and just reactivate and soften out the edges. Let's explore some other textures you can create with your brush. Here I'm using a blunt round brush and gently pressing at the base of the bristles to make the hair split apart and picking up a bit of paint I can now stipple on the paper to create a foliage like texture. If you have too much water on your brush the hairs will clump together which will make it difficult for you to split the hairs apart and at the same time the paint will be much more watery and you won't get that fine stipple texture. So again you can remove some of the moisture with some paper towel just by taking it off the belly of the brush. This will make it much easier for you to split the hairs apart. The next brush I'm using is called a Filbert Grainer brush in the Princeton Velvet Touch range. You can use it to create grass-like textures as the hairs are very thin and split apart. You can have a lot of fun experimenting with this one to create all kinds of textures. Because gouache is opaque, you can use white gouache to sprinkle on stars. You can use a liner brush and just tap on the brush. You'll be able to achieve larger splatters while not getting your hands dirty. Or you can use a filbert grainer brush or a fan brush and sprinkle on the stars that way. you get much more smaller clustered splatters on the paper. In the final video in the series, we're going to put everything we've learned into practice and paint six small paintings.